Hi guys, Jimmy McIntyre here. I'm excited to say that Raya Pro 2.0 is going to be available for download on the 23rd of February. Now remember, if you're an existing user, so you've already purchased the panel, you'll get that download completely free. So just keep an eye on your emails around that time. If you've been thinking about buying Raya Pro, but you were putting it off until 2.0 was released, you can still purchase Raya Pro now and you'll get the 2.0 version for free uh, when it's available for download. Now in this video, I'm going to show you some of the newest techniques we've got, which include amazing exposure blending tools and also some new contrast adjustments, sharpening methods. It's a whole different panel, but we've still got a lot of the great stuff that was in the original panels too. Okay, well, let's look at some of the new additions to Raya Pro. You'll see the first page that you open up is a little bit different to the previous one. But don't worry, we still have the old quick blending tab and the luminosity masks too. We just have two new tabs here, precision masks and fixed blending. Now, the first thing you'll notice is we have the stack button here, and this is replacing the numbers one through nine. And what this does is, if you have open windows like this in Photoshop and you want to put them in one window as layers, you simply press stack. And they're all stacked now. We also have black mask and white mask and these will apply masks to all of your layers apart from the background layer. So if I press black mask, you'll see they all have a black mask. And if I press white mask, you'll see the same thing happens. Now this is good if you know you're going to use luminosity masks in your workflow. So now we're going to look at something which is probably the most exciting development in the panel. And these are precision masks. These are 16 bit luminosity masks that allow us to blend our exposures very easily and very quickly. And I'll show you exactly how. So if you're not sure how to use precision masks, you'll see here how to use precision masks. And you can click on that and it'll tell you how to use them. But essentially, whenever you have your layers like this, Make sure you have the layer you want to blend and the background layer visible and all other layers invisible. Then we simply press auto blend dark. So I'm blending the dark exposure, so I need auto blend dark. And when that's done, you'll see we've blended our exposures very quickly. But we have actually created six different masks here. And remember, these are 16 bit masks. And to the right of Auto Blend Dark, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. And if we press these buttons, we can basically test out the six masks. And you'll see each result is different. Now, if you go to mask one, we can see what the mask looks like, and that's a general mask. But if we go to mask six, that's a much more targeted, specific mask, which isn't really ideal for this image. Now, what if we don't have the mask that we want? What if it hasn't given us the best selection? Well, if we want, we can press manually edit. And now we can just create our desired mask, just like that, and then press OK when we're finished. But I'm going to press cancel here. And if you're happy with your masks, all you need to do is press select. If you don't want to blend, you just press cancel. So I press select, and now I have my blended exposures. And below that, if you want to blend in a brighter exposure, we have exactly the same thing. Now let me show you a different example of this where we would use a more specific or targeted mask, like 5 or 6. Here we have a darker exposure on top and a brighter exposure on the bottom. Now all we want to do is take the lights from the darker exposure and put them into this base exposure. So we only want to affect the lamps here. We don't want to affect any other part of the image. Maybe a little bit of this guy's hat here and maybe a little bit of the sky. So all we need to do again is make the dark exposure visible and go to Auto Blend Dark. Now, just as before, we start off with a very general mask. So it's flattened our image somewhat. Since we only want to affect the brightest parts of the image, we can then go to something like a five or six mask. So if we go to five, this is what the mask looks like. And it's much more targeted than before, but it's still affecting some of the sky. So you can see the sky has been a little bit flattened. But if we go for six, now you can see we've affected far less of the sky and we're mainly just affecting the lamps. So if I zoom into the lamp, you can see we're bringing back some lovely detail in that lamp. And the same goes for this lamp here. There's the before and after. 
And when you're done, you just press select. So for a more targeted mask, we go for five, six, or four. And for more general masks, one, two, and three. Or we can manually edit our own masks. Now the next function you'll see down here is color zones. And again, if you don't know how to use color zones, you can just click on this button and it'll tell you how to use them. With color zones, we can blend via color. However, this is not a good exposure blending technique by itself. The best way to blend exposures is through brightness, not color. So this won't work if you just want to blend exposures via color. And in order for this to work, we already have to have an existing mask like this. So let me show you how it works. We've blended these exposures just as before, but in the mask, some of the sky here is still a little bit gray. And we want this to be white so that we can take all of this sky from the darker exposure. So all we need to do, because we want to add to this mask, is press add color. And here we can press the area we wish to add, here. And then if we want, we can bring the fuzziness down to make it a more exact selection. Choose the plus tool, and then we can add colors to that selection progressively. And if I press OK, we've now brought more of the sky from the darker exposure. And again, we have numbers along here which allow us to choose the strength of our change. So this is the original blend that we had, and this is an improvement, and the stronger we go along, the stronger the effect. So now we've taken more of the sky from the darker exposure. But as you can see, that's actually a little bit too dark. So let's just go for something like one. And if we're happy, we just press use. Now let's just say we don't like how dark the buildings here are on the rooftop because the sun's hitting it, so it should be quite bright. And essentially we're taking the dark rooftop from the darker exposure and we're putting it on top of the bright rooftop from the brighter exposure. So in this mask, we want to take away that color. So here we go to subtract and we just click on the roof like that. And we can click a bit more on the roof if we want. And we can narrow our selection a little bit and just press OK. And now we've brightened the roof. We can click on five for a really strong effect. We can click on zero for the original one, or we can choose different strengths as we go along. And I'm gonna go with one here and just press use. So those are the brand new exposure blending techniques that we've got in Raya Pro, which are very exciting and make life just a lot easier. Now let's take a look at fixed blending. We can see three options here, fixed dark blend, recover highlights, and contrast. And for more information on this, press the read me first button. Now guys, these techniques aren't as clean as the techniques I teach in the Mastering Raya Pro course. They will help you fix an image if it hasn't blended correctly, but the techniques I teach on how to prepare your images first before blending are far cleaner and far quicker as well. But if you don't know what to do and you haven't seen the course, these will help you fix a poorly blended image. And let me show you how. So here we have two exposures. This is a bright exposure, and I'm just gonna disable the mask here. And this is the darker exposure. And I wanna bring back the information in the window. So I created this mask using precision masks. However, you can see that the blending is far from clean. It kind of looks like a bit of a negative around here. So with the dark exposure selected, we can choose fix dark blend. And when that's done, you'll see we have a lot of options to the right in the layers panel, and they're just temporary. Just like in the precision masks, we have options we can choose from. And see if I press two, you'll see the window gets brighter or three, it'll get brighter still. What about five? Now the image looks much more natural. Or we can go six, which is too bright, or seven, or eight, which is even brighter. Or we can just stick with five. If we're happy with our selection, we can press select. And now we've made the blending much more natural. And below you can see we still have the dark exposure, just in case you wanna do that again. Now the two functions below that, recover brights, this is actually just a way of recovering overexposed highlights. So let's say the building or outside was just a little bit too bright and we wanted to bring it back, we can choose recover brights and that would bring back some of those highlights. And the bottom one here, sometimes when we blend brighter exposures, we find that we lose a little bit of contrast. So just select your brighter exposure if this happens and press contrast and you'll see it brings back a little bit of those details. But again, I show you how to fix that in a much cleaner way in the Mastering Raya Pro course. So now let's look at some other functions in Raya Pro 2.0. If we go to Enhance, this page is exactly the same, 
but if we go to enhancements, we've added a lot of new functions here. For example, this is a brand new Orton effect, which is much cleaner. And if you're not sure about what an Orton effect is, it creates that beautiful Lord of the Rings dreamy feel, especially if you're shooting landscapes. Let me just quickly show you. If we just press OK there and press OK, you can see we've now created a very soft, dreamy feel. And this is a little bit strong. And we certainly wouldn't use this in interior work. But it's just a quick example to show you how we can create this nice, soft, dreamy effect. The next functions we've added are the highlights and shadows dodge and burn techniques. Now, if you haven't seen this, please go on my YouTube channel, search for Jimmy McIntyre in YouTube, and you'll see a video called how to dodge and burn effectively in Photoshop. And I show you exactly how to get the most out of this tool. It's a very cool way to dodge and burn. Next, I've added something called zone contrast. And if we press this, we'll see that we get a new folder called Contrast Zones. And here we have six curves layers, and all of them have masks applied to them. And they are all targeting different parts of our image. So these are our midtones, these are our shadows, and these are our highlights. So now we can make contrast adjustments based purely on brightness levels. So let's say I just want to affect the brightest parts of the image here. I just click on Highlights 2, and I can bring up the highlights like that. But what if I don't want to affect the highlights because they'll become overexposed? Well, I can go to Midtones too, and bring up the midtones, and this will only affect the midtones. It won't bleed over into the highlights there. So that's the before and after. And I'll just reduce the opacity a little bit there because it's a bit strong. And here are the shadows. If we have any dark shadows, we can obviously raise them or we can darken them. So zone contrast give you much more control when you're applying contrast adjustments in your workflow. And finally, in the Enhancements tab, we have cold shadows and cold highlights. Now, in the past, we had this in Raya Pro 1.0, these two options, but I took them out because I didn't think anyone would be using them. And then I got a few complaints from users saying they really liked those functions, so I've added them back in to the panel. So they essentially just add blues to our shadows or blues to our highlights and just cool the image a little bit. Now we can see a lot of changes in the Finish tab. The very first thing we'll notice is that down here we no longer have the sharpening options. Instead, all of those numbers have been condensed down to by width and by height. So if you want to sharpen your image, you can choose, let's say, width. You choose the dimension, so we can say 3000 pixels wide. Then we get a pop-up asking us if we want to convert the color profile to RGB. And this is recommended for publishing on the web. So we can press yes, and now sharpening complete, and OK. And now we have all these different layers which allow us to choose the strength of our sharpening. And we also have the option of doing the same by height instead of just width. Below that, we can convert the color profile with one click, so we can change it to sRGB, Adobe RGB, or Profoto. And down here we have some quick save options. So if I want to save this as JPEG, I can just press JPEG, and here, we can just save it as we wish. But I've added a couple more functions into the Finish tab. For example, we've added the Frequency Separation 16-bit option instead of just the Frequency Separation 8-bit option, which we had last time around. If you're not sure how to use Frequency Separation, again, you'll find that video on my YouTube channel. It's very useful. And another video on my YouTube channel is how to use this Sharpen No Edge function. Now, this is how you sharpen your image full size. And it basically allows you to do that cleanly without too much white edging that we often see when we sharpen. So please go onto my YouTube channel and you'll see a video called How to Sharpen Photos Cleanly in Photoshop Without White Edging. And that's it for the Raya Pro 2.0 update. Remember, you get this update for free if you already purchased the panel, because you get updates for life for free. So keep an eye out in your emails for an email from me, Jimmy McIntyre, around about the 23rd of February. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.